So we've tested a ton of CPUs on the channel. We've checked out Intels, every single generation we can get. We've checked out Threadrippers, we've got AMDs, we've got all sorts of Ryzen 7000, but guess what? The most requested review on the channel is none of these. It's actually something that I have massaged AMD to get me a sample for probably like 12 months, but there's always been an excuse. Sorry, delays, delays, delays. I finally got it. The 3DV cache CPUs. How good are these for creators? Because AMD on the website says for content creators or for creators and for gamers. Well, which one is first? Is it gaming first and content creation second? How much different is it from the actual Ryzen 9 7950X or the 7700X? And the funny thing is, AMD said that they will send me the 7950X 3D, but in the post what arrived is a 7800X 3D. So in this video we're going to be taking a look at the 7800X 3D and how does it compare to the actual Ryzen 7 7700X which is quite a bit cheaper and some of the Intel counterparts. Which one should you get? Is it actually for creators? Let's find out. Licensing Windows is cheap and easy with whokeys.com and if you use the code TN20 you get an extra discount. Wow! Complete the purchase, copy the key and paste it to the activation settings. And you're all done! Also check out their Microsoft Office 19 license and use the same code TN20 for the extra discount. Check out whokeys.com in the video description below. So if you've got good eyes you've probably noticed that this box here is still actually Ryzen 9 7950X 3D and that's absolutely right. I actually bought one for myself from Amazon when we did the Lando PC build. So the 7950X 3D review is coming out very soon as well. So if you like to see that, subscribe button and the like button are your best friends. Go give them a visit, but don't hit them twice. Now you probably can find this information online, but I think it is important to check out the specs first, because then we see where does it actually line up. So we've got 7700X. 14600K, 7800X 3D and 7900X as a comparison here for specs. One of the first things I'd like to get out is the price because this is why I've chosen some of these CPUs for a review. The 7800X 3D right now at the point of me making the video, it goes roughly around $393, almost $400. For that amount, you can actually get a Ryzen 9 7900X, which is not an 8-core CPU, but a 12-core CPU. So I want to know as a creator if it's worth getting the 3D version or actually get more cores and what's the actual difference. Then our 14600K, which really should be competing I don't know where it is. Let's say this is a 14600K. <laughs> it actually is 14600K. I pulled out the first one out of the drawer. It was the right one. The 14600K is the cheapest in the bunch here. $320. So that is around $80 cheaper than the AMD version here. And the 7700X, which doesn't have the 3DV cache, is $307. So the cheapest in here, almost $90 to $100 cheaper than the 3D Vcash. So is it important to get the Vcash in your eight cores? Well, we'll have a look at that. Most of the specs you can see on the screens really aren't anything interesting. One thing I do wanna kind of highlight is the PCIe lanes. On AMD, we get actually more, 24 lanes and they're all PCIe Gen 5. On Intel, we get 20 lanes and it's 16 in Gen 5 and four Gen 4 lanes. So if you wanna get an uh, Ender 2, that's Gen 5 on Intel platform. It actually comes from the chipset, not from the CPU, or you're gonna lose the PCIe first slot bandwidth for the GPU, and you're gonna have to run it at X8 or something like that. So, but on AMD, you can have the GPU, full bandwidth PCIe Gen 5, then have actually space for two more PCIe Gen 5 drives, which means that the chipset is actually, and the CPU in terms of connectivity, is better on AMD. The other thing that's interesting I'd like to highlight is the max turbo frequency. On the X3D compared to the 7700X, we are have 400 megahertz lower max turbo frequency in clock speeds, which is interesting. But what is the 3DV cache? That is the L3 cache. As you can see, compared to the 7700X, we have 96 megabytes, which is three times as much as on the 7700X. Compared to Intel, we have almost four times, exactly four times actually, the Vcache on the 7800X 3D compared to the 14600K. But the 7900X is not far behind, 64 megabytes, 
So I want to see how that actually compares. If you want to check out my test bench setup, I'm going to leave it linked in the description below, as well as some of the CPUs if you want to pick them up. When you do click on the links, I've got multiple choice pages there. Make sure you check the different shops out so you're not going to get just ripped out by one retailer because they're not running the deal or something like that. When looking at the CPUs, it's also important to check out the memory controller. The 7800X3D actually is running 5200 megahertz with two sticks up to, that's native gear one. And then when you have four sticks, it is actually 3600 megahertz, which is exactly the same as any of the Ryzen 7000. So it doesn't change anything. Intel's 14th gen is actually better, 5600 and 4000, but it's exactly the same as on the 13th gen, but the 14th gen has a little bit of a better silicon quality and SP score. So it looks like you're probably gonna run higher frequency ram on intel just so you know and basically for creators what that means is that if you've got four sticks on your motherboard enabled bear in mind we're splitting memory channels now you're gonna get higher memory speed on intel platform compared to the amd because of the memory controller but it does vary individually per cpu and the imc and the silicon lottery because some of the cpus might be better on amd than on Intel, but generally on average, Intel should be better. Looking at the max power consumption now, the 7700X pulls 145 watts from the socket when testing on Cinebench R23. And the 7800X 3D is quite a bit lower, 55 watts lower, around 90 watts we're pulling, which is quite a bit lower power draw. Interestingly, that is actually lower than what AMD advertises. I believe the 7800X 3D is actually 120 watt TDP. We're pulling 30 watts less than what AMD is advertising the TDP to be, which is interesting. I'm not sure what is going on there. Maybe the Asus motherboard is actually making some optimizations and pulling down the frequency or the wattage because it doesn't, doesn't need to run that, whatever. The 7900X is running 200 watts and our 14600K is running 170 watts. Now bear in mind, this is at full load. That's when you're doing something like Cinebench, runs or Cinebench as a creator or Blender runs or rendering something out. Even video rendering doesn't actually utilize all of this as much this can do, but not all the time. But one thing I did notice is that the general idle wattage is a lot higher, can be 10 times higher than on Intel. Intel's monolithic design on the CPU architecture is actually much more power efficient when running on idle it can pull like a couple of watts when being idle the 4900k can just idle at five six seven eight nine watts whereas some of these especially when it's dual chiplet design when we get to the 7900x and the 7950x it can easily idle just at 40 watts doing absolutely nothing just 40 watts pulled from the socket now at the same time intel's max power draw is a little bit higher and amd's is a little bit lower but in general, when we're looking at uh, a creative workflow, when you're doing video editing, for example, photo editing, then I have noticed, have a look at my dedicated video on this, that actually Intel is more power efficient than AMD. But if you do a full Blender run, for example, or Blender, then obviously AMD has a much better efficiency in terms of getting work done for the same power draw than Intel. But to annoy some people, I'd argue that even on a Blender workload, unless you leave it rendering, when you're actually working on viewport and doing some of the adjustments, Intel will be a better choice for you just because the single core and idle performance on a lower workload is much better optimized for Intel than AMD. And AMD will, in general, consume more electricity. But I don't think you're gonna get any of these for you know, getting the most efficient CPU. Let's move on. Now, Cinebench R24. Our baseline is the 7800X3D, and then we'll see all the other ones if they're faster or not. The 7700X is actually 6% faster in single core and about 5.2% in multi-core. Interestingly, the 7900X is 8% faster in single core score, but 52% faster on a multi-core, which is insane because it's got 50% more cores, but as you can see, we're getting more than 50% multi-core performance. So the core scaling in R23 and Cinebench looks very, very good. The 14600K is 7.2% faster in single core score, but 28.5% faster in the multi-core score. Again, not so good for the 7800X 3D. Geekbench 6 will see similar scores. They're very general scores here, not really creative workflows apart from Cinebench, unless you're rendering there. But the 7700X is about eight, up to 8% faster. 
7900X is actually 10% faster in single core score, not so much in multi core score here now because they don't count threads as much. And the 14600K is very similar in single core score, only 2.3% faster and about 16% faster in multi core score. Moving on to Blender. So this is now where we're rendering something out and putting this together. This is a very heavy workload on the CPU, calculating everything. And we can see that the 7700X is actually 4.7 to 11.5% faster in the monster junction and classroom scenes. So it doesn't look so good for 3D either. 7900X is ridiculously faster, 60 to 70% faster in these scores. And the 14600K being a lot cheaper, actually faster in Blender as well. 16 to 21% faster. So those e cores actually do matter here. Moving on to Photoshop, and this is my old version of the Photoshop benchmark. So all the scores that you're gonna see here, if you wanna go back to my best CPUs 2024 videos, you can actually extract the X3D scores and you can line them up there to just see all of the CPUs compared. Feel free to check them out. I didn't want to retest them in a different scenario or a newer version of Photoshop or a newer version of the benchmark, just so everything is comparable. Now, the 3DV cache actually kind of starts to make sense because the 7700X is about 4% slower in overall score but the GPU score is 21% slower, even though Photoshop doesn't do as much on the GPU. But here we can see that the actual cache on the CPU, the very close fast memory, that's faster than RAM, faster than your, your M.2 storage, actually matters in the GPU score, 21%. And you can see that 7900X, it's 26% slower and the 14600K 23% slower. Even though the GPU score doesn't necessarily mean a lot in the overall score, it's interesting to know that this really works and the GPU likes to utilize this because now when you think about gaming, you know, you, your GPU makes, you know, a lot of sense there and you need a powerful GPU to get all the frame rates and high resolution and good details. Having more cache on the CPU it kind of makes sense, as you can see. The 7900X is about 4% slower in the overall scores. Interestingly, actually slightly slower than the 7700X in Photoshop, really any Ryzen uh, 7000 series CPU is good. And actually the 7800X 3D is faster than the 14600K as well. Even though single core score was faster on the 14600K, about 4% slower. So it looks like for Photoshop, the 3D CPU actually might make a little bit of a sense. Moving on to Lightroom Classic, the 7700X here is about 2.7% faster overall, but passive score is about 3.4% faster. The 7900X is 11.4% faster here. As you can see, having more cores is actually better in Lightroom Classic. And the 14600K is very close to the 7900X performance. As you can see, within 0.4%, and the active score is actually faster in the 14600K, probably because of the single core performance being faster, boosting a little bit higher, but the passive score is a little bit slower. So here in Lightroom Classic, the 7800X 3D doesn't look as good and getting any of the other options here seems like a better idea. Now video editing and starting with Premiere Pro, the 7700X is 2.7 to 3% faster in the extended and standard overall scores. As you can see, the raw score, standard score, is about 9% faster. So kind of doesn't make sense because the 7700X is 90 to $100 cheaper CPU. So as a creator for video editing, it kind of doesn't make sense. And for the same price, you could get the 7900X, which is 11 to 20% faster in the standard and extended overall scores. As you can see, the raw score is 45% faster, which is ridiculous. So if you do edit raw, the 7900X is a lot better doing that. Now, the 14600K is even faster in extended overall scores, about 14% faster. The standard overall score is about 15% faster. It falls a little bit behind the 7900X because of the raw standard score. The raw standard score, so when you're doing red 4K raw, for example, the Ryzen P cores having 12 of them really makes a difference in there. But at the same time, long GLP score, look at the 14600K. 31% faster in the standard and extended scores because the iGPU on the Intel actually makes a huge difference and certain codecs can only be accelerated on the little iGPU that Intel has. So if you're a video editor, Intel seems to be the better option here. But depending on your codec, if you do in RAW, 7900X might be a better option there. Adobe After Effects. The 7700X is about 3% faster overall scores. Tracking is 11% faster, which is insane. 
and the 7900X is even faster in tracking. Obviously, multi-core is faster as well because we've got more cores and rendering that out on more P cores kind of makes sense. But the 14600K is roughly about the same in overall scores. RAM preview is a little bit faster on the 14600K, probably because of the faster, faster RAM speed, because I did test all of the CPUs to their native like gear one kind of an IMC setting. So the Ryzen CPUs were tested at 5200 megatransfers per second and Intel's at 5600 megatransfers per second. The latencies were the same, but just using the same memory kit, but just a bit faster, 52 and 5600, just because it supports that. Now, ideally, there's even more performance in store because AMD says run 6000 if you wanted to, which is actually out of their, you know, warranty or standard stock settings. And Intel could run even faster as well, you know, you go and check them out. If you want to know how fast you could get or what's a RAM performance increase that you could expect for just a really fast, like 8,000 megahertz RAM kit, I've got a video about that on the channel. Go check it out. Now, DaVinci Resolve. Here, the 7700X performs very, very similar, similar here and seems like the extra V cache doesn't make that much of a sense. But here, looking at the GPU effects, you can see that the 7700X is actually 4.7% faster compared to the 7800X 3D. So interestingly here, even though using the same GPU, the V cache doesn't make as much sense and perhaps with CPU bottlenecked, so CPU feeding some of the things to the GPU will make the GPU faster even though it's exactly the same GPU. The 7700X is not much faster, interestingly. In the overall scores, the 4K media score is quite a bit faster compared to the 7700X and 7800X. But I would have expected the 8K media score to be faster just because more cores, you know, you're chewing through some raw codecs, that would be better. And then the 14600K is actually slightly slower in the extended overall scores, but the standard overall score is a little bit faster. 4K media score, 6% faster, but 8K is 21% slower. I guess having 8P cores is better than having 6P cores and loads of E cores, what it looks like here in DaVinci Resolve. But interestingly, the GPU effects are 6.4% faster, probably because of the faster single core score on the Intel, and then it just feeds the GPU these effects faster. Now, let's have a look at V-Ray as well. Here, the 7700X is only 1.1% faster, so the basically having 3 dv cache there doesn't make any sense the 7900x really is 56 percent faster and the 14600k about 15 percent faster so is the 7800x 3d a creator cpu honestly not really and now i get why amd didn't want to send it to me because you know it doesn't look so good does it here's the thing if you do have this cpu and maybe you're a gamer and you're doing gaming most of the time but you do want to edit some of the video and do some of the editing you know, of your photos or thumbnails or whatever you want to do. It's actually okay. It, it's not bad in that sense, but I guess it's more optimized for gaming rather than creative workflows. Now, there's one thing to check out. The next video about the 7950X, because suddenly now we have double the cores and even more V-Cache. And is this the ultimate creator and gaming CPU? Because suddenly we're not just at eight cores, we're 16 cores and a lot of V-cash. Would that be a different scenario here? Well, stick around for the next video.